it. You started this in 2000, long before you became mayor. It's yeah. now 2016, and you're, to use a sports metaphor, seeing the ball coming across the goal line. Yeah, it's, it's, Why did you start this? I mean, an Irish Catholic from Because from an Irish Philly. Catholic killed him. <laughs> okay. 1871. Um, one of the Irish Democrats uh, involved with the McMullen brothers in the South Wark Ward, uh, and the host companies down there, the old uh, volunteer firehouses, uh, was responsible for his death. Uh, and um, I feel like somehow... Um, me being a part of this is kind of writing that, uh, writing that wrong. The only thing I could say is, finally. <laughs> it seems like it took forever to get this done. I think I started, I learned about Octavius Valentine Cato, I think in 1999-2000. Um, started in earnest. The effort probably in 2002 3 uh, to accomplish this. Um, and it was a very difficult struggle. Uh, actually, we've lost some folks. Mr. Jumper is no longer with us, and he was there at the beginning. And hopefully, he's uh, smiling up there. Um, but not since 1923 has there been any new statuary uh, on the City Hall apron. Um, and it was an amazing, I didn't realize it until I read the story this morning that it's been you know, 90 some years uh, since we've honored someone. This gentleman, individual, has been worthy of the honor um, since 1871, when he was taken from us at 9th and South on election day, uh, simply trying to exercise his franchise and to bring other people to the polls. Um, his first foray into public life was a standoff with a trolley car operator on Pine Street in the 1860s where he had the audacity to enter a segregated trolley car and refused to get off. Uh, the operator of the trolley car was so upset with his, his, his possibility of losing his job for having a black man on the trolley car, um, derailed the trolley car on purpose, took the horses away and OV sat there for a couple days uh, while people came and learned about what segregation and prejudice was about. You know, when you were African American in Philadelphia in those times, you could be wearing a Civil War Union uniform and not be able to ride on a trolley car. Your family, if you were wounded in the Civil War and you were at the military hospital, could not get on the trolley car to visit you. Um, when you think about the struggles of the 1960s uh, and the Civil Rights Movement and you see what people went through, um, having their heads split open and dogs signed on them and, and water cannons uh, held against them, um, you realize that the struggle is not the 1960s struggle, it's a struggle from the beginning of this country. And I think that the importance of this memorial is one of education, of educating people about the contributions of folks whose contributions were intentionally denied. Malcolm X said, if you didn't know you did anything, you never know you can do anything. So if we had the Martin Luther King and Jackie Robinson of his day uh, that I didn't learn about as an adult until I was 40-some years of age, uh, never heard his name in school, never heard his name in college, uh, had to read about him. Uh, actually, the, the, the story that I read about him had to do with the people who killed him, not, only him, not, not, not him himself, but the McMullen brothers who, uh, who were actually responsible for his death. Um, this is important for Philadelphia. It's important for the country. It's important for African-American history, which isn't African-American history. It's American history denied and delayed. Uh, and I think I'm very, very proud to be here, standing here today with the artist who will speak a little bit about, um, about this project. Um, and Carol Lawrence and Jim Straw, who have been involved with this from the very beginning, and again, a lot of patience, a lot of effort has gone into this, and I am just so proud to be standing here today. So thank you very much, and um, well, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see this. I thought I'd never see the day, but, <laughs> but here it's coming. So who's up, who's up next? Jim? Yeah. Jim Straw. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. What a glorious day, and it's a glorious day for many reasons, because we have seen the transformation 
of a forgotten hero to a known hero to an honored hero. And this is after 145 years since his death. Without the passion of Jim Kenney and his commitment to see this project through, nothing would have happened. Instead, he sparked the creation of the Octavius V. Caddo Memorial Fund. Our first meeting was in 2003. By 2005, 2006, we were organized. We recognized that no one would donate money to the creation of a memorial unless they knew about that person. And he was still a forgotten hero. So education and outreach was important to us. We started that process under V. Chapman Smith, who is with us this morning. And we started the fundraising process. Our first public announcement was in 2006. Our first check arrived from the Union League of Philadelphia, and we were off and running. One of the important things is that we needed to know that we had the funds in hand or committed to begin in earnest the search for a sculptor. So in April of 2008, we convened a jury, an extraordinary jury of individuals from around our region. Mo Brooker, artist and educator. Mo's here this morning. Lisa Trumper Hanover, the director of the Michener Museum up in Doylestown. Joe Rischel, who needs to say more about Joe. He is the curator par excellence at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Helen Shannon, professor at the University of the Arts. And Leslie Graves, entrepreneur, civic leader, and collector. And we had at our sides the city of Philadelphia and many of the department heads um, along with us. The jury deliberated. Artists were invited to submit their credentials. A short list of artists was given a modest commission to develop their concepts into a schematic design. A second round of development phase was uh, initiated and ultimately the jury unanimously recommended to the fund that Branley Cadet should receive the commission for this important work of art. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Branley to you all, and he and the mayor will unveil his remarkable work of art. Branley. Before we, before we unveil it, this is, this is not just a statue. This is an education piece. There is so many elements to the P, to the work, that will tell the story. Uh, so when people come by and they say, well, who is this man and why is he there? Why is he 12 foot tall? Uh, he should be 20 foot tall. That's how, how important he was. But you can read about all the aspects of his life from education to military service to athletics um, to civil rights. I mean, this, this, it's so multifaceted that um, I always thought that Denzel would play him in the movie, but he's probably too old now. So. First, thank you all for, for coming to this uh, unveiling. Um, I'm truly honored to be here and to have been uh, selected as the artist to um, depict Ovi Caddo and his uh, contribution to our country. Um, I prepared a short statement uh, to give a brief overview of the memorial design and its inception. Um, but first, I want to acknowledge uh, the teams of people, um, just a subset of the teams of people um, that have are helping to bring this project to fruition. Um, first, of course, Mayor Kenny, the OV Caddo Memorial Fund, the Selection Committee, uh, all of the donors. And for my research, I do want to acknowledge uh, the Historical Society of Pennsylvania, the Library Company, uh, the Pennsylvania Transit Museum, uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Philadelphia Tribune, 
authors uh, Dan Biddle, Marie Dubin, and Aaron Smith. Um, and for the production and design and construction team, I've been fortunate to partner with the same group of companies um, that are responsible for the Dilworth Plaza renovation. Um, so I'll be collaborating with uh, Olin Studio, or have been collaborating with Olin Studio, Landscape Architects, CVM, Structural Engineers, and Construction Managers. Uh, the Lighting Practice, Cold Spring Granite, um, Artworks Foundry, uh, David Banyard uh, helped me with the 3D modeling, um, and that's just a small group of people that are helping there. There's clearly been many, many of you who are here now uh, played a role in creating this memorial. So a quest for parity, the Octavius Cato Memorial. When I was invited to submit a design for Octavius Cato Memorial, um, I read about his life and I um, read about the times and I came to Philadelphia. I'm originally from New York and California um, to familiarize myself with the landscape that he walked. Um, I wanted to walk the steps that he walked, walk in the neighborhoods that he walked. So I went to South Street, I went to Bainbridge, um, walked up Broad Street um, to see his home, the school where he taught, the um, ICY, Institute for Colored Youth. Um, and I also walked the vicinity where he was shot. Um, but it was in walking around City Hall um, and being present to the fact that this is not only the, the center of, uh, of government, it also happens to be a major transportation hub. And I was uh, struck by how very different our experiences, mine and Caddo's, were. Um, Octavius Caddo, for the most part of his adult life, um, could not vote or ride freely um, in mass transportation. I, on the other hand, can now freely use mass transportation and vote. Um, I became keenly aware that both the political establishment and mass transit on this site here at City Hall were radically transformed as a result of the actions that Octavius Caddo and his contemporaries took. I thought it was fitting to highlight these accomplishments in the memorial. So, there are seven sculptural elements in the design uh, that defined essentially three zones. Uh, the figure is a central portion, the trolley car pillars, and the ballot box. So the figure will be an 11 foot bronze sculpture on a one and a half foot base. Um, with Cato's arms outstretched, evoking the presence of his progressive collaborators, past, present, and future. He looks to a yet unseen but sensed, sensible, just future and acts to interrupt the divisive forces that plagued our nation. It will be the first sculpture honoring a singular African American of his and his contributions to this great city. In 1864, in a commencement address for the ICY, uh, Caddo said, and this is, uh, this is abbreviated, so he said a lot more, but this will actually be the thematic quote that will be represented on the memorial. Caddo said, there must come a change which shall force upon this nation that course which providence seems wisely to be directing for the mutual benefits of all peoples. Three years later, in 1867, Philadelphia desegregated its horse-drawn trolley car system after a long campaign led by Octavius Caddo. So the five granite pillars that you see here, and uh, you see an example of one there, um, will highlight various aspects of Octavius Caddo's life. Uh, the pillars are truncated and arranged along a curved Sir, a curved line to reflect the mutable nature of seemingly fixed social policy. In 1870, Caddo helped to ratify the 15th Amendment, safeguarding the right 
for men to vote regardless of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The ballot box, um, which you see there, uh, will be fabricate, fabricated in polished stainless steel and will sit on a granite cube engraved with the 15th Amendment. It will also bear the date of October 10th, 1871, the day when a 32-year-old Caddo witnessed his first election since the 15th Amendment passed. Many black men were violently attacked and killed that day, trying to exercise their newly acquired right to vote. It is unclear whether Caddo actually voted that day. There is no record. It was, however, his final day. In my life, um, I've had the luxury and privilege to vote unhampered by threats of violence. I am a child of Octavius Caddo's envisioned future. A future he helped to create and paid for with his life. A future I get to live. The work of public art is never manifest by one person alone. As it takes a village to raise a child, so too does it take a collective to cause a civic movement, to write unjust laws, and to create a memorial. All of us play a role in moving the clock of social progress forward. May we all like Octavius Caddo, be honorable custodians of our children's future. Thank you. Yes. I think after Branley has commented on his particular design, you can understand how we chose this particular individual to be the artist to create this memorial. It actually has taken on more passion, and it's been a privilege to work with him. And as I look out around this room, there also isn't anybody in here that hasn't been important to this project. You believed in us, every one of you, and we couldn't have been here without him, and I'm sorry, but he's made me emotional. <laughs> um, the most important thing is, we are there. We're all, I should say we are almost there. We are fundraising. We're continuing to fundraise. We have had an incredible amount of people that have supported this effort. I'm looking at the OB Caddo Lodge. There from the day we started day forever. <laughs> their checks. We also were so thrilled to have the city of Philadelphia who actually came to the table with the largest amount at the very beginning, a $500,000 commitment, which we, in this, we were in this room when we accepted that. And we were able to match as well as add additional funds, thanks to Blue Cross and Blue Shield, to Comcast, to Pico. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but because everyone is over there, the Boule stepped up with some foundation money. There were individuals, dollars that came in. We continue to hear from individuals that asked to write a check. Yes, we're still fundraising <laughs> um, because this project is not over. But the most important thing is that it is an effort that everyone has taken on along with the educational component. Our mayor talked about that. We'll go beyond the sculpture, the sculpture installation at the southwest corner of City Hall but we continue on. 
Leslie Graves will support our efforts on the fundraising. We'll be reaching out. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. It couldn't have happened without you, and we're most appreciative. Well, thank you very much for attending, and I am confident that on October 10th, 1871, he voted. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Um, and to the gentleman from the lodge, from Ovi Caddo Lodge, thank you so much. OV. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but but it's, it's not only Caddo, it's the entire group of folks of free blacks in Philadelphia who were highly educated and very, some of them very wealthy and accomplished. Um, um, and it, there's a whole group of people around the Mother Bethel area that really were major influences and major impactors. In, the, in, 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 in our country's history uh, that were, were torn out of their history books. I mean, we're not talked about, we're not, we were not educated about them. Because I honestly believe that if you know the history and contributions of every group, you'll have a better chance of respecting every group uh, because you know what they've done. Uh, I've always said that the most patriotic, and we're starting to lose them every day, uh, we're losing four or 500 a day, World War II veterans who are African-American are probably the most patriotic people in the country's history because they went overseas, they served their country, they put their lives in danger, and then they came back to Jim Crow and segregation and still maintained that hat on, that baseball cap on with their military service insignia and were patriotic and continue to be patriotic to the country. So I think it's really important uh, that we, we acknowledge and honor that. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I can't wait to actually open this, this unveil this site and cut the ribbon. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here today, so thank you. Jim McKinney, then councilman, came to Jim Strahl and myself and asked us to chair it over 13 years ago for, as you heard from this particular event, a passion of his. And from that point, we've been focused on making sure that this happened. Now. Doing that 13, 13 years, was, years. There, was there ever a doubt that this would ever happen? There was never a doubt. Okay. It was going to happen. It's interesting, over 13 years, obviously, so much happens. There were problems with the economy. We'd just pause on fundraising. We'd come back. But the mission, we never moved away from the mission. Absolutely never. And I think we were more motivated by all the individuals represented here and on our donor board that continued to be fascinated and interested in this project. Every time we mentioned the name, it was positive. So you didn't really need more than that to know that it had to happen. Now, what are the next steps from here? What happens next? Well, we are moving into the construction stage. There's been some quiet moments, but it's behind the scenes. And we break ground after the DNC, which will probably be August. and. By the end of the year, we will have a piece at the southwest corner apron of City Hall. Um, <laughs> I feel like, like somehow, well, like I, like I, feel, I, I feel right? somehow that uh, maybe I, I'm in a past life I had something that, you know, was involved in some way. I mean, it's a kind of strange concept, but there was this compelling need for me to rectify the injustice uh, that was done to him and the fact that his contributions were ignored and um, not known by the general public for so long. I mean, we actually found his grave out in Cowan. You know, actually, there were five, this is amazing history. <clears throat> there were five cemeteries in Philadelphia that were African-American cemeteries. It was Lebanon, Olive, Stephen Smith, Eden, and another, I forget. No, they were all, they all were taken for public works projects. So Caddo's Cemetery, I think it was Lebanon in South Philadelphia around St. Monica's Parish in there, okay. was taken for a sewer project. Imagine trying to do that today, uh, it would not happen. I mean, we couldn't, Wickico Playground and Mother Bethel's burial ground was a major issue when it came to renov renovating that playground. Uh, that, so anyway, all these folks decided to get together and buy land in Cowan, Pennsylvania, called Historic Eden Cemetery. And out there are buried some of the most famous regional African-American Philadelphians 
Uh, Marian Anderson's out there. Cato's out there. And we couldn't. Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a walk through history. It's just amazing. Almost every African American judge that was originally uh, elected under the Republican Party are all buried out there. I mean, it's just uh, uh, William Still and his wife are buried. I mean, it's just it's amazing stuff. But we couldn't find them, and we had this woman out there who was an archivist who um, did research, did research, and found his grave. And we had a beautiful black granite uh, uh, headstone put out there, and we did a great ceremony with the USCTs uh, doing a you know. 21 gun salute. So it was really just amazing. Um, but the interesting part of the story is that Stephen Smith's wife, right as they had purchased the property, passed away and they tried to bury her out there. And the white folks out there protested the burial of a black woman in their neighborhood. Not a, not a live person, dead person, right? So they had to go back at night um, and and by torchlight and bury her in the, in, the, in, the, in darkness. Um, but it's just, it's just an amazing, if you ever get a chance to go out there, it is, it's beautiful. Why is it important? Because unless we understand each other's contributions to our country, it's hard to respect each other. And as long as we can understand that the Caddo's of the world existed and that the Richard Allen's existed and the Absalom Jones existed and, and all those folks had their contribution to our country's um, progress, then we can perhaps little white kids and little black kids and little Hispanic kids can understand each other's culture and history and respect each other better than, than we do today.